behalf of Dr. Zandra and Jenny Ray, but thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Behind the Faith. And of course, I'm not on my own. I'm here with my beautiful wife today. And we are so blessed to be joining you. Shante, you're looking good as always. I know the last time we were here, I gave you too many compliments, but I'm just going to say I'm here with my beautiful wife today. So babe, how are you doing? I'm doing so fantastically well. Yeah. Look, I got better at that. Hey. And I hope, we hope that you are doing extremely well too. It's another week of Behind the Faith. And we just want to welcome all of our family joining us from whichever platform you are watching us from. We just want to say we love you. We appreciate you. And can you appreciate where we are Come standing hey. right now? Look at all these chairs. I mean, this doesn't this take you back, Jay? Come on, this sure does take me back i remember you know years ago when td jakes uh, bishop td jakes actually visited us as a minister a ministry and uh, he joined us for for a powerful time you know a, a one night only special with bishop jakes and we had to stack out chairs thousands of chairs so i remember these chairs and you know just looking at every single one of the colors of these chairs i mean beautiful representing the nations of the world and i know and we know that as the signal goes to every part of the nations of the world we know that you've been blessed by the word of faith we know that as god's word has gone forth it never fails to produce. So get ready for a jam-packed show today. Yes, and we can't wait to get straight into this word of faith, this jam-packed yep. show that we have for you. We are going on a dome journey. We are speaking mm. to Zama Gumere, where she um, takes us on her journey, her passion for missions yep. and for souls. I mean, you will get so yep. impacted by it. And then obviously we've got financially yep. speaking a little bit later, hey. but right now, tell us where you are watching from. Yep. Comment in that comment section, share this broadcast. Yep. And remember we have faith dailies every single day just for you. So remember to register for that so that you can get it straight into your email box. And that is partner at myfaith.com. Don't miss out on this one. Come on, my partner at myfaithtv.com. So be sure to send us that email so that you can get your faith dailies daily. <laughs> and then as well, if you've not yet followed us on social media, that being Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, every single one of our social platforms, our handle is at myfaithtv. At myfaithtv, that's ha that handle. Then again, smartphones. Everything is on demand today. Our smartphones, I mean, you could use your device for almost anything today and you can connect with the Faith family all around the nation of the world. Download Faith Now. It is readily available in the Google Play Store as well as the Apple App Store. You need to get that app on your device. And talking about app, talking about things happening right here at the Great Faith Dome, that Dome Journey update with Vilna Hutting, such a special, special update. Check this out. My name is Volna and I work on the second floor in finance. I've been here almost five years. Okay, So my journey to get here I actually started by Carrier Dyke Warehouse and um, my boss there is Mr. Greg Stewart and he's best friends with Mr. Greg Lewis. So they sort of had discussions and I got sewed into the ministry. That's how I got to be here. It was it's been a very exciting journey, I must be honest, and I feel very privileged to be here today, especially in this amazing venue. Um, I can see a lot of excitement happening in the venue. Um, I can see a lot of people experiencing the presence of God once they enter here because it's just so, so magnificent. If you saw the before and now you see the after and it's not even done yet. So I think it's going to be quite awesome and something really amazing. Well, I didn't think it would look, look as magnificent as it does now, I must be honest. <laughs> I was like, yo, how even are they going to be able to complete it? Because there was like half a roof, I think, by the, when I first got here, and there were no lights, no, there was, a, there was nothing. There was hardly a floor. And I was thinking to myself, it has to be like a humongous faith walk of everybody together in order for anything to happen to the dome here and I also I was a bit confused about how many people they could fit in here but I tell you if you look at it now and it's not completed yet I think it's going to be pretty amazing you've got to have a, like a, a good connection with God you have to and you, you can't do much without having faith or the connection to God you can't because if I if I think back over my life and how he protected me and guarded me without me even knowing about it. Imagine what he does for you when you have faith. 
in God. It, he can do so much more for you compared to, you know, somebody that doesn't really have a connection or doesn't really have that faith. Oh, you've got to make sure you come here. <laughs> you're going to have to make sure you make at least one appearance because if you come here first time, you will continue coming because the presence of God is going to be everywhere and all over. And that's the, it's the best way to experience it because nobody can explain to you how it feels. You've got to be part of it and be in the moment. family man i am so excited for this interview today because i'm here with the beautiful zama g and she runs our missions training program for our ministry and listen you want to tune in you want to make sure that you share this broadcast today because someone might want to hear exactly what Zama has to say. So Zama, it's so nice to have you with me today <laughs> on the Behind the Faith family. And today, I actually, I just want you to tell all our viewers watching, why are you so passionate about mission? You know, um, Shante, this question actually takes me back like 54 missions trips earlier. <laughs> Yeah, it's been that long. And I, mean, I remember when I went on my very first mission trip, um, I had such an encounter with yeah. the Lord. I was doing the missions training program, and I think I was two months in the program when we went on our very first missions yeah. trip. And I remember on that trip how I personally had an encounter with God. And through that encounter, Jesus showed me how much He loves people, how much He is passionate about souls. And my passion stems from that. It comes from that because when I had an encounter with Him, I saw His heart for the people. I started seeing people the way Jesus sees them. And that's what has kept me going. 55 mission wow. trips later and that's where my passion comes from I'm passionate about what he's passionate about and that is souls and that is encountering people yeah well I mean are you as passionate about souls as Jesus is because I think that's that's one of the most important things for us as believers we have to make sure that we are passionate about every single soul yeah. not just in the streets not just our neighbors but even those abroad and I mean God is ministering to you now I'm sure to partner with this ministry so that they can go out and do more incredible work and with that said what is one of the or what is the greatest testimony that has impacted you on a mission trip the biggest testimony that has impacted me was when the very first time I saw the power of God flowing through my life. I mean, I went on a mission trip not knowing that God can also use me. I just thought, oh, I'm just part of, you know, everything, but this is just for pastors. God will not be able to use an ordinary person like me. And Shantae, I remember we actually went to a house where we prayed for a chief and he was bad reading he was so sick and before we actually did everything we just asked if we could pray for him does he believe that Jesus Christ can heal him and I remember when we were praying for him I put my hands on his back but I was like so scared yeah. you know doing that and when we finished praying for him he just said the pain is gone and then he turned back and he looked at me and he said when you put your hand on my back I felt the pain leave listen I started bawling I yeah. cried so much and that's when scripture came alive to me that God is not a respecter of persons he honors his word if you preach his word he will come and he will confirm his word with signs wonders and miracles no matter who you are so that's one thing that I've carried throughout the years that's the testimony that has built so much confidence in me that I can walk in any situation and I know and I have confidence of the person that is on the inside of me because greater is he that lives on the inside of me, on the inside of you, on the inside of that person watching. You know, when you walk into any situation, Jesus will manifest his glory. And that's, I would say, yeah. the one testimony that has really impacted me and kept me going. Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> can you feel that? I mean, I think the one thing that I got from you is that 
the words of Jesus in my mouth is as powerful as the words of Jesus in his mouth. The power that flows through my hands is as powerful as the is as powerful as the power that flows through his hands because he lives within us. And this is the great commission. This is what God has entrusted to us as his children. So now, um, Zama, you run the missions training program, which is you equipping people to become missionaries. Maybe tell the audience what your vision is for the place for the training program and how they can be involved. And maybe there's a student out there who really wants to be trained up as a missionary. What will it take for them to join your program? Listen, Chantel, what I can say is that if there is somebody watching right now and you know that you know that yes. Jesus has called you as a missionary, as an evangelist, Listen, it's very vital that you come and be trained up. So the vision for the missions training program is to raise up missionaries, people that carry not only the word of God, but the power of God, who are going to walk into dark places and manifest Jesus, give people an, an opportunity to encounter him. And that's what the missions training program is about. You know, it's not only theologically su theological subjects but it's also practical subjects yes so you only you not only have an opportunity to just be in the word but we also give you an opportunity to step out and to do ministry to practically apply the word of God and that's where all these great testimonies come from so my encouragement is if you know that God has called you to be a missionary this is the place to be to come and be equipped in the word and go out and spread Jesus come on that call is for you to go out and spread Jesus if you feel like this has touched you this has called you then do something about it today The heartbeat of any Christian, any believer, any ministry should always be souls. And that's why we love the missions training program, because it is a part of an equipping tool for each and every single believer who knows that God has called them to the missions field. So if you're interested and are hungry to be a part of that, you can contact the missions training program, Every Tribe Missions, one incredible conversation with Shantae and Zama, you know, to encourage people about this missions training program. And I'm always feeling blessed to hear the testimonies and the stories of what is happening out there. Listen, man, talk about things that are happening all over the world happening out there happening right here you have to make sure that you catch jglm with curry blake monday to friday at 9 30 a.m central african time as well as the nicole crank show every tuesday at 5 p.m central african time good wholesome content that's going to build you and equip you especially with curry blake i'm telling you right now it's talking about the miracle working power of god and nicole crank to equip you to be a more effective christian right here especially in these end times so talking about end times talking about things that are fundamentally important to us as believers let's quickly go join that uncle of ours in the finance business gregory clerk So welcome back once again, right here, financially speaking, with our uncle in the finance business. It's great to have you joining us. Listen, Uncle Greg, what an incredible conversation we had last week and we're picking up again. And, you know, you know, you spoke about that birthing on the inside, that, that vision that leads to it, right? And we come, we, we, we touch on, and I want to say this specifically, we're touching on things. We're not really going oh. as deep because we're just hitting on the surface level. Absolutely. And I want to encourage people to go out themselves, to learn more, you know, and, 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 and you know, build up their own na a knowledge base, if I can mm. use that term. But let's jump into, now, okay, I've got this vision. And um, I love the, the, the statement you used last week because you spoke about the disciples walking on water because now they can see it. But then how do you become a Peter and actually get out the boat? <laughs> Faith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Look, as we said last week, um, vision gives you a destination. Yeah. Okay, it gives, you, it gives you direction. It gives you a destination. You kind of know what your end point is. 
I can tell you that every time you get to the end point, it looks different to what you thought it was going to look like. It's like going on holiday. You have this romantic notion of what the hotel looks like, but when you get there, it never kind of looks the same. Yeah. It doesn't look better or worse. It's just different. Yeah. Okay. So, so that is the nature of vision, and that that we understand that. Now that directs the boat, or that gives the boat a destination. But what actually puts wind into the sails is faith. But this is where it gets really interesting, Bundy, because faith, I think sometimes for many people is a misunderstood force. Mm. And faith is a force. It's a principle of the kingdom, but it is a force. And, you know, faith is not hoping for something. Yeah. Faith is knowing something. It's true. You have a, you, you hold, for example, you're holding on to a promise of God from the word, from scripture, or the Lord has spoken to you by his spirit. You know, he has said something to me. You, there's something that you know, and you're trusting that God is going to come through. However, we know from scripture that faith doesn't work unless you have a plan attached to it. Okay? It's like having a vibrant prayer life. Prayer doesn't work either unless you have a plan to deliver the, what God says to you in mm. your prayer. Okay, so it's the same with faith. You've heard something from the Lord. You, you're believing Him. You're trusting Him. Maybe you're a tither. You've got your seed in the ground. You're trusting for your financial harvest. But no farmer reaps randomly. He's got to have a very strategic plan. And this is where strategy comes in. Sure. Because strategy is what gives a body to your faith. Yeah. Okay. Faith is what puts wind in the sails. But strategy keeps the right sails trimmed. Okay. to get you in the right direction. Because if you do not have your sails correctly trimmed, you're going to sail in the wrong direction. Yeah, but what if I'm sitting out there and I'm like, well, strategy, it sounds like, you know, it's counter to faith because I'm just supposed to, you know, God's given me this vision. I'm going to trust God and I'm just going to, you know, walk by faith. Okay, so that, now that, it, that's actually an easy question, but I'm going to answer it in a strange way. I'm going to say it, say it this way. Just do the best you can with what you've got and let God do what he does best. Okay. Okay. Because that's how faith works. He has to, another way of saying it would be your, 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 your approach or your business model is giving him clay. He's the potter. Mm. You're just giving him the raw materials. But you're going to shape it as best you can. But he's going to finish it for you. Sure. Okay. He's going to work supernaturally. He's going to bring business opportunities that you never expected. They're going to come over the horizon called opportunity. Sure. And he's going to bring them. Bring, but if you haven't even started the boat, you're never going to get to that horizon where they come over the horizon to you. Success happens when opportunity meets preparedness, mm, right? That's true. So, so, so your faith is not something that is blind. Your faith is not something out there in, in the blue yonder. Your mm -hmm. faith is something structured. You've got to have a proper business plan that is, that is putting wind in your sails. But faith is going to be the force that moves it along because you're trusting God with what you can do. And while you're busy doing what you can do, including your prayer life, he is by faith going to move supernaturally for you. But you have to be, you have to have, uh, be operating according to kingdom principles. You've got to have seed in the ground. You must be tithing. You must be doing these various things. Okay. But if that is the way you're going to approach your business, then faith will work. Faith doesn't work on its own. Yeah. Faith needs your participation. This is not a one-sided deal with, with the Lord. You know what I mean? Faith actually is covenant. Sure. Faith is covenant. It's God's response to what you submit to him. And what you're submitting to him is not a blind hope. I'm going to do the best I can with what you've given me, Lord. And I know you're going to do the best at what you do. So I go from a journey of God gives me this vision, yeah. this, this dream, this direction. Yeah. I kind of sit on that. I gestate. I, 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 I pray about it. I'm listening. And then now I've got to get on this journey. Because, you know, it's one thing to... To, to have the dream yeah. but now I've got to go on this journey and yeah. I don't have the finances yeah. I don't have the resources yeah. I don't have the contacts but well, I know God's called me you, you've raised something let's talk about that you don't have the finances okay um, you cannot put provision in front of a vision because okay. the vision's not going to get very far Okay. okay, your provision comes with direction mm -hmm. and with a business plan directed at that vision and it's got provision built into it okay and that's where you're going to need supernatural partnership of God into that process. Mm. Put another way, money isn't the end game here. Money is not the end game resource. Money is sometimes produced by strategy. 
Money is not a res the only resource. Money is actually the end product of all your other resources. Okay. Wisdom, strategy, the wisdom of God. You know, your business plan, God moving supernaturally. All those things working together produce money. Money isn't the beginning and the end. Money is just part of the process. Jeez, so it's not even an end product. It's no. just a byproduct. It's so a it's byproduct. Just... And, and, and because, because Jesus said you can't worship mammon and him. Mm. You've got to choose here. Okay, so always make sure that you understand that your profit and your money is a tool. That's all it is. It has to have a context. That can, cannot be more than that. You can't worship the thing that's been created. You've got to worship the creator. Sure. But we must understand that money is the end product of the application of your other resources. Of which strategy, God-given, godly and skillful strategy that Solomon talks about will produce money. Sure. You know, so I think it's very important. You have vision. It, it's it's the it's it's the it's the direction of the boat. It's the destination of the boat, and you have faith, which full, fills the sails. Mm -hmm. But faith works with you. It doesn't work independently of you. You have to apply faith. Peter had to get out the boat. His strategy was to walk by faith. Sure. He had to walk. Faith didn't make him walk. Faith was what directed him to walk, but he had, to, he, had, he had a part to play in the process. So when we're in business and we trust in God by faith for something he's promised us or something we're believing for, you have to come up with a business strategy directed with that and trust that God by faith is going to give you godly and skillful wisdom to make it work as best as possible. You do the best you can with what he gives you and he will do what he does best. Sure. Well, Uncle Greg, we've actually circled straight back to Peter and the boat. And I think, I think that's where I'd like to bring it to a conclusion for this part, talking about faith. Um, you know, because obviously we've run out of time as well. Yeah. But what's so amazing is now we've spoken about the vision, we've spoken about faith, you know, but then there's that one element of business prudence because there's all these other little things that come into play and you have to do your tax and all yes, those things yes. but we're going to have this conversation about all of that next week so you've got to keep it tuned and listen if you've missed the first part and you're like hey listen I missed the first part go on to Faith Now this program is available right there on Faith Now so you can download and be a part of the platform and catch behind the faith and catch a lot of this content we'll see you next time What an amazing interview with Uncle Greg. I tell you, every time I hear Greg Close speak, it's, 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 I, I, it's powerful. Not only powerful, but I mean, I, I don't know what I've been doing. You know, what have I been doing, you know, all my life? But I tell you what, you know, it's, it's interesting that the word says that God will give us skillful and godly wisdom as we apply the principles of the word. And as we live the word, we have skillful and godly wisdom and by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So that's amazing. You know, listening to Greg, Uncle Greg speak about finances and speak about just our ability to steward with what God has placed in our hands. I tell you what, God wants you to be a blessing to your generation. And what better way to do so than by being a good steward of what God has placed yes. in your hands. And speaking about stewardship, let's jump onto the yeah. partnership train because partnership is so effective and it's so powerful. Matthew 18 verse 20 tells us, Jesus tells us, where two or more are gathered in my name, yeah. there I am in the midst of them. Now we are not just talking if we if we consider ourselves and our entire faith family. And then for those of you who by faith are going to join us after I have spoken to you and encourage you to do so, we are not just two or three, we are thousands. Millions. And millions. Yes. And imagine the effect that we can have as a corporate body yeah. with one vision, one heart, giving all of who we are into the vision of sending the gospel out. Listen, even just looking at these chairs behind us, we see every chair filled, but we need your partnership. We need your heart, your vision tagging along with us. God will tell you what to do. Yeah. All you have to do is be obedient. Yeah. Just like we are yeah. right here in That's this right. ministry. God has given us a mandate and all we are doing is being obedient to that which He has told us to do. By partnering with us, you are being obedient to the Great Commission. What better way yeah. to celebrate Jesus than by partnering yeah. with us? We appreciate all our partners that we already have, but we would love it if you would join us as a new partner. You know, in fact, I believe that there's business people watching right now that you know that you're, you know, and it's, and again, it's not about the amount, but a significant part 
partnership financially. Let me tell you, when you partner with God, when you put God first, you will never finish last. Let me say that again. When you put God first, you will never finish last. And that's the reality of partnership. We've chosen to partner with God. And as you partner with us, the very grace of increase, the very anointing of increase upon this ministry comes upon you as you partner with us. And you know what? Talking about partnership, we've got there's so many things happening right here at the Great Faith Term. And you had an interview with Zama Gumere yeah. from Every Tribe Missions. And I mean, their mission training program is also about to begin soon. Every Tribe Missions, one goal, every soul. And you know what? I, I just love her passion for Jesus. Passion for souls. Seeing the Great Commission fulfilled in this hour. And I'm sure you received that too watching that yeah. interview. Because listen, if there's someone that you know that is passionate yeah, about missions, passionate about souls, they believe they are evangelists, tell them to yeah. head on to this broadcast or go onto their website, yeah. go onto their Facebook page as you've already seen the details come on the screen and partner with them yeah, by on. giving your time, giving your effort, yeah. do whatever you have to do, but this word has to go out. Right. Then what also has to go mm -hmm. out is Faith Today yeah. every single weekday, Monday through Thursday. Pastor Andre and Jenny are doing Mondays to Wednesdays and then it is here in Buffalo City Buffalo with Pastor City. Kevin and Chantal and then Pastor Brad and Jazan on the Thursday night 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central African time. You don't want to miss these broadcasts. It's awesome. It's power packed. It's faithful yeah. and man we receive so Come much on, from the it. Holy Spirit. Even just looking watching these programs. Yeah. Don't miss out on that. That's it. Faith comes by hearing and yeah. having heard by the Word of God and still hearing the Word of God. And then on Friday, it is the NXT, Equip, Inspire and Expand. This is for the next generation. And again, it's not just for young people, but for young, old, those who are young at heart. Yeah. Every single person, you know, every every Friday we've been hearing testimonies. Yeah. We've been in, in, the, in the studio and, and even the, the, the audience, people that have been coming through to the venues have been radically impacted by the power of God. And so you don't want to miss the NXT. So there's the NXT. If you've not yet followed them on Facebook or on Instagram, please go and check that out. The NXT.TV is their website as well as their handle on social media that happens at 6 p.m central african time fridays then cherry on the top we finish off on sunday with faith worship yes. right here in the great faith dome great faith dome yes. in buffalo city at 9 a.m central african time with pastors kevin and chantal right here in buffalo city and with the entire team in fact you know every single person that's involved whether it be the sound guys the production team the ashes in the in the studio our the entire church it's your it's our corporate worship of god as we celebrate jesus together on sunday come on you don't want to miss any one of these yeah. it's all available for you on demand and you know what if you do not have a yeah. church why don't you join us on a sunday morning at 9 a.m here in buffalo city south wow. africa we would love to welcome you well, we hope you enjoyed today's show on behalf of Pastors Andre and Jenny Ray, but thank you so much for joining us today. And we know and we believe that you were blessed today. May God continue to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that you can ask or think. Bye-bye.